Hi. This is the fourth part of a series about the gradient tool in Photoshop. If you missed the last part, the link is in the description for this one. So we're going to finish this up with a couple of ways to use gradients. The first one is going to be a combination of snow and horizontal static that we're going to use as a kind of vignette for an image, as if we're getting hazy reception through a time portal. Since this is Photoshop, there are a lot of different ways to do this, and I'm just going to show you one of them. So this is the image we're going to use. It's from Dover Books, the Old Fashioned Children Photos book, and um, the title's up here if you want to look at it better. So that's that. Now to add the static, the first thing we're going to do is put in a new layer, and to do that, of course, we go to the New Layer button at the bottom of the Layer panel and click on it. And now we want a linear gradient, so we're just going to click on the Linear Gradient button and click on the blue arrow here, and we're going to choose the noise gradient that we made in the last lesson. So we'll choose the amber noise gradient right there. And then I'm just going to start at the top of the image, hold down the Shift key to constrain the gradient so that I get nice horizontal lines, and just drag to the bottom. Not any farther than the bottom, because I want as many lines as possible. And there we go. Of course, that totally obscures the image on the bottom. So to start making the snow, we're going to change the blend mode to dissolve, and then I'm going to change the opacity to about, oh, 70 something percent right around in there. And as you can see, that starts to break up the lines of static so that we can see through them a little bit to the image below, and it breaks it up in a kind of a snow pattern. Now I want to have a vignette, which means that I need to have an area in the center that's clear, and then it goes to the snow pattern at the um, edges and on the corners and things. And to do that, I'm going to use a layer mask. So I'm going to go to the bottom and click on the New Mask button, and that puts a layer mask on the image. Now I want to have a radial gradient on the mask, so I'm going to click on the Radial button. And then I'm going to choose the Black and White gradient, which is right here. Now if you remember about masks, black pixels hide the layer that is attached to the mask, and white pixels allow the layer to show. You can remember that because black shadows hide things and white light shows them. So we're going to need to have a large black area in the middle so that we can see the picture, and that will have to fade out to white at the edges. The thing is, if we use the gradient the way that it is right now, we're going to have just a single black point in the middle, and we need to have more than that. So to fix it, I'm going to click on the gradient swatch to edit the gradient. And then I'm just going to take the color stop here on the left and drag it to the right to about 50-something percent. And that means that all of the center is going to be black, and then it's going to start to fade out after it gets to about the middle of the gradient. So I'm going to click OK to use that. I don't have to save it in any way, of course. And then just click in the center of the image, hold down the Shift key again, and drag out almost to the edge. And when I let go, I've cleared out the middle just the way that I wanted to. Now that um, looks OK, but the static is not very good, and I can improve that by putting another layer on. To do that, I'm going to duplicate this layer, which means I'm going to hold down the Command key, that's Control on a PC, and tap J, and that duplicates the layer. Now the first thing I'm going to do is change the opacity back to 100%, and the second thing I'm going to do is hide this layer mask, so I'm going to hold down the Shift key and click on the layer mask thumbnail to hide it temporarily. And you know, now I think about it, we don't actually need that layer mask at all, so I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to go to Delete Layer Mask from the drop-down menu, and that will make it just go away. Now I want to put noise on it, so I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and that opens up this dialog. Of course, I can change the amount of noise here with a slider, and I can also change the distribution. I can have it uniform or Gaussian, and I can make all of the extra colors go away by clicking in the monochromatic checkbox. But I think I'm going to leave it at Gaussian, and I'm not going to use monochromatic, and I'm going to reduce the um, amount here to about, oh, about close to 50%. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to click OK. And now in order to be able to see the vignette again, I'm going to hold down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and click on the line between the two layers in the layer panel. And that clips this layer to the layer below it, which means that you'll only be able to see the noise where we already have the pixels that you can see in the layer below. So that takes care of that. And now I'm going to change the blend mode to, um, let's use Vivid Light. I think that one looks pretty good. Or maybe not. In order to tell, I'm going to tap V to get the Move tool, then hold down the Shift key, and I can use the plus and minus keys on the keyboard to cycle through the various blend modes until I find one that I like. And um, actually, I think color looks pretty good, so we're just going to leave it at that. And that will take care of that one. 
So the other question that I was asked uh, was about getting two centers for a radial gradient. Now, of course, you can't actually do that directly in the gradients, but you can do it by using multiple layers. So I already have an image set up here with a gradient on the bottom and a clear layer on the top. And we're going to get the gradient tool again and a radial gradient. And let's use the one that we made in the second lesson. I think I call that one Fred. It's right there. And as you know, if I click and drag out a gradient, what I'm going to get is something that completely obscures the layer below it, unless I change the blending mode. And if I change it to something like, oh, say, Lighten, then I can wind up seeing both gradients at once. Of course, you can use the Move tool and the plus or minus keys to cycle through these as well. But the thing is that um, this kind of rather remarkably changes the color. Even if I go to Lighten, which in this case was as close as I could get, the color is different. And I might not want different color. So to do that, I can just change the opacity of one of the gradients. Let's click on the History tab and go back to before I had anything on that. Double click there to hide that again. And now I'm going to click on the Gradient Swatch to edit the gradient. And that, of course, opens the Gradient Editor like we've already done. I don't know how many times at this point. Now remember that the stops up here at the top are opacity. So I'm going to just take the stop on the left and drag it over so it's above the yellow. And then I'm going to take the stop on the right and I'm going to change the opacity to zero. And now because I don't want any green in this gradient at all, I'm just going to click on the green color stop here on the bottom and drag it off so that it disappears. And then I can click OK, and now I can use this gradient. And now when I click and drag out a gradient, I can see both center points and the colors are the way that I had them set up. And I even can uh, put several of them on the same layer if I want to. And that takes care of that. We're out of time for this lesson and we're also finished with gradients. So um, we'll be doing something else next time. And until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.